Welcome to the Red Raider Coaches Show. I'm your host, Joe Hayes, and I'm here with our head football coach, Keith Goss. Uh, coach, welcome to another show. Excited to be here. We're in uh, week four, correct? Well, we've played four. We've played four, so technically we're, kind of we're, we're week five. Week, rolling into week we're five. Rolling okay. into week five. All right, so week five, um, we're coming off another big win, exciting thing for our football program. Um, you know, first big shutout for our boys in quite some time here. Uh, since uh, I believe said since Coach Poot, yeah, it was uh, 2013, I believe. Yep. So uh, big win uh, again. The players, you know, I know we're excited. The community was excited. A lot of excitement going around the program. And um, before we dive into that and start dissecting it and talking about it and talking about the, you know, the game, I want to talk about our sponsors. Something we try to do each and every week. We like to get our sponsors uh, the recognition they deserve. Uh, our platinum members, we have six, which is the most we've ever had. Uh, it's our highest level of uh, sponsorship. We definitely want to thank these guys, uh, Industrial Forge, Parker Food Mart, Bacon County Hospital, Southside Church of God, Titan Modular Systems, and Anytime Fitness. Coach, anything to say about those uh, sponsors? I mean, it's, it's every week I can't say enough about yeah. their, their support, and along with all, all of our sponsors. They've really um, done a lot to help us um, you know, obviously this is a challenging season uh, with everything that's going on with the, the you know, pandemic. And uh, so, you know, there's, there's extra money being spent on different things, cleaning stuff and, and, and having other stuff prepared as far as putting the masks on the players when we, even when we get on the bus to travel. Um, and it all adds up. It does. It all adds up. So it, it's, um, their, their support has been greatly appreciated. Coach, and my, I think my favorite thing with them, too, is getting to know them and their business. A lot of these, because it is Alma, Georgia, we, uh, you know, we know what the companies are and we kind of know what they do. And something, you know, we, we know what Bacon County Hospital does. There's no, you know, denying we, everybody in the community knows what Bacon County Hospital does. But, um, you know, their support, our community and what they do and, you know, whether it's saving our loved ones or, uh giving first aid to, you know, cuts and all right. this stuff. I mean, it, but it goes on and on. But there are other ones like Titan that maybe someone in the community doesn't know. They build uh, modular homes, uh, industrial forge. They make specialty nuts and bolts and right. not anything to do with football. They make specialty nuts and bolts and for submarines and nuclear reactors and uh, just an unbelievable just business. Part but, of our community. But they are. And, and Anytime Fitness. Uh, I, you know, I know every Wednesday now they're, they're starting to do uh, free community workouts yeah. outside their gym for 20, minute, 20 or 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> just a way to, to reach out in our community, which I think is just awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, Parker's uh, Food Mart, um, you know, they're more than just a gas station. Yeah, they are. They, they have. They are one-stop shop. They are so one-stop. <laughs> I've gone there and bought everything from, from dog food to dinner. Yeah. And uh, and it's all good. It is. It is. And, and so it's it's uh, you know places like that that really are, are. And you can smile about it. You know, I'm I like that I can go one place and go in somewhere. Just like Sunday, I had to leave to go out of town. I pull in there, I get my diesel fuel. I said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and get something to eat. So I went ahead and I said, you know what, I need some masks for because we're going on the road on a trip. And I'm gonna go ahead and get. And then it's nice to be able to just go ahead right there, bam, 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 bam and uh, took care of everything I needed to take care of. And I spent the next eight hours on the road driving and didn't have to worry about trying to find another store somewhere. So That's right. if I can spend my money and I can do it, I like being able to do it right here in town without having to go outside of town to, Absolutely. to do that. And uh, Southside Church of God, uh, that group and pastor and youth pastor and uh, their involvement uh, with our school system is just huge. And, We'll maybe share a little bit about that and how the, the different churches and their involvement to uh, maybe a little impact, but uh, just big things to have them part of our program and be that close where we can reach out because sometimes you may have, uh, you know, a player that's um, seeking a church or going somewhere that you can direct someone uh, or if you um, need speakers to come right. and talk to the players. Uh, if we need them fed, those type things. Yeah, and, and, and for them, I know it, their support is genuinely 100% to support these children. And they right. know what you're doing down here and the direction that you're you know, trying to take the program. 
and want to give that support to help you guys out and to help those kids out. So it, it's big. It's, yes, uh, there's, there's again, I know you guys hear us talk about these people each and every week, but it, it's, it's a major part of our program and we can't do what we do without them. Without the support of this community. Yep. We, each week we went over our different levels. We just talked about the platinum uh, sponsors. Uh, we have gold sponsors, silver sponsors, bronze, uh, black. Uh, last week we spoke about the black. This week I want to go over the red. We want to thank uh, Tyler and Macy Taylor, uh, Johnny Taylor, Rashid Slade, uh, Tavares Folsom, PJ and Leslie Douglas, Ontario Moore, Beverly Gurley, uh, Megan Harkle Road, Ricky Justice, Wendy Rogers, uh, Calvin and uh, Dawn Thomas, Amy Hutto, Blake Lewis, Eric Moore, uh, Kaziria Wright, I think I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. Uh, Brian Brutus Barber, uh, Blueberry Barn, uh, Miss Ann Wiles there at the Blueberry Barn, Buck Carnage. Uh, again, another big list of, of names there of giving support and you know choosing a level. Uh, those of you out there that don't know what these levels mean, you can get with a Touchdown Club member. We can explain the different levels and kind of the what, perks. What, yeah, what perks come with each package. Yep, and uh, it, it's just a huge way to make a contribution to the program. We try to give something back to you that you can hold on to for uh, which is our appreciation to you for your, your contribution and uh, each level gets more and more and more all the way up to the platinum and that's putting their signs on the field and names on their logos and uh, all this media uh, attention that we try to get them and, that's right. and, and we ask for you Raider Nation even if you can't give a contribution the way that you can help back is definitely do as much business as you can with these guys Absolutely. And, or at least thank them. If you see them or if you run into them, just let them know how much you appreciate them, how much you appreciate their support uh, for Bacon County football. And, you know, Coach, it, you know, I know there's times that I can't, you know, necessarily say give $50 every time uh, that we have a fundraiser, we have a raffle, or we have this. So, you know, everybody understands that. Just because you can't give, you know, you can come to a game. You're supporting our Red Raiders. That's if right. you buy uh, something in the concession stand, you're you're helping our band. If you buy a program, you're helping our cheerleaders. So every little tiny thing adds up in the big picture for everything right. of what it's going to to make this whole operation run. And because uh, it's not just about football. It's not. It's it's really about all of our programs and elevating uh, everything that we do here in Bacon County. And. I hope people see that. Yes, sir. That it's not just about it's not just about one sports program, and it should never be. And so, um, you know, we're going to try to build this this in every sport. Yeah. So and I'm thankful to be part of a touchdown club that really, truly practices that philosophy for us to keep all sports in mind. And when we have an opportunity to do something for the cheerleaders, we try to do that. If we have an opportunity to do something for softball, that we've done that. And to me, that's a lot of appreciation of the core group that, you know, we're, we're all in this together. And, you know, we're only as successful as our other counterparts over here. We want everything uh, to be successful and, and, and fight and grow. Uh, we want to see basketball do well this season and, and improve and uh, get better. And we want to see softball compete and get better. And, and whether it's wrestling, band, cheerleading, we pull for all of them. We're, we're Red Raiders right. through and through. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, let's go a little bit into the game. Uh, again, big game. We, we kind of go in. Uh, I know for me, and this is just speaking from what I saw, you know, right at the start, uh, you know, it was a pretty physical matchup. There was a little concern there at the, at the very start of the game. And, um, you know, they come up against us, um, made a stop, forced us to punt to them. Uh, you know, we stood up, defense played well, uh, made a stop, and then somewhere right in there, it just we started getting a little momentum uh, that, that was created. And from there on out, we much, pretty much carried the momentum and maintained it for the entire remainder of the game. And uh, offensively and defensively, we did a very, very good job. Um, let's break it down. Let's, uh, let's start with offense. Uh, being we put up 
that many points on the board. Let's start there with those guys. Coach, uh, I felt Mason Michael had a really big night, looked really good in the pocket. I'm going to give you the opportunity well, to kind of. Mason, Mason had, had his biggest night so far, and it was uh, just offensively before we even talk about a, a, a individual player. Um, one of the the biggest successes of the night was the the amount of balance we yes. were able to maintain. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't just you know run the ball. We didn't just throw the ball. It was a it was a balanced attack, which is is what we strive for. Um, you know, our backs um, had probably the the tougher job. Their team was built a little more to stop the run. Right. Um, and we were able to take advantage of a few more things down the field, um, secondary wise. But Mason had a, had a monster night. Uh, he threw for two. He rushed for two. Uh, I think he was eight of nine. Eight of nine or nine of ten. Yeah. He only he only had one drop. And I say drop because it you know it was dropped. Right. Um, now that player got a chance to get another one later. That's right. And uh, we're proud of him. Yep. And um, got a, got a big play off it and touchdown. That's one of my favorite things in football is when you see that, um, you know, it just happened in professional sports. If somebody slapped the football out of the guy's hand, you know, before he crossed the right. into the end zone, and, and they turn around and give him an opportunity to redeem himself. That's right. and, and, and that's that's just growing up. That's just it's life up. lessons. Life <laughs> lessons and, and a part of this great game. Yes. Um, and and that, that player jumped out there and, and continued to work and, and – had some success, and you love to see stuff like yes. that. Uh, that's that's going to help him grow as a person, yep. and not just grow in the sport, but understand that, you know, yeah. Sometimes there's challenges. Sometimes you drop the ball, yep. and you got two choices: you can lay down and feel sorry for yourself, or you can jump back up and go make the next play. And he did. Yep. So that's a credit to him, and and I I love the fact that we're growing character wise in this team, and and, and the wins are a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's times where you know, don't get me wrong. They're still high school boys, and they got to be corrected yeah. and, and educated on, on how we do things and uh, be better young men. But the fact that that we're starting to do some things successfully on the field is a byproduct of them doing enough of the right things over a long enough period of time, and that's uh, that's exciting. Coach, is that what you attribute more of this balance? I know sitting in the press box Friday night. Uh, I myself was thinking it, and I had some, you know, some other people up there talking them that exact word, uh, and even from the Brantley County side, it, it was coming that there was a lot of balance, and you know, it's not something we've seen very often from, you know, Bacon County teams in the past. We've either been pretty run uh, heavy, or we've been pretty pass heavy. We've got really good uh, quarterback and good wide receiver core, but. You know, our starting running back was injured. We just always had that uh, something slow one part of the game down. What do you attribute with this team of having this much balance uh, with this group of guys right here? Um, I think a lot of it started last year. Uh, last year, after several games in, I, I made a decision that we were going to start on one side of the football. And we weren't doing very, very good at the time. Right. Um, but, I, but I made a decision we were going to go that way, and, and our guys were going to be an expert on that side of the ball. Um, we weren't going to ask a kid to play both ways if we couldn't help it. I think there was one, one uh, young man that still had to play a lot both ways, but we, we tried to move away from that. Now, if you're a starter on one side of the ball, you're probably our first backup on the other side of the ball. Yeah. I mean, we, don't, we just don't have that many players. Um, but I think it does something – to build depth, uh, for a person to, to build uh, pride, and this is my position, and take ownership in it and develop in it. Um, and I think a lot of it started last year as we started that process. Um, now we have more depth. We have more guys that take pride in the fact that are starter. Uh, without crossing guys over, we have you know five or six receivers that can step on the field and do the job. Uh, we have two or three running backs that can step in and, and run the ball. There's more competition because more guys play. Right. And um, I think that's a part of our growth process. Well, I commend you on that, Coach, because it it definitely showed in that game uh, as, as much as any game that I felt like we've had. Um, 
being able to see that balance offensively uh, because every player that had a big play or uh, had a good catch or a good throw or a good run, uh, that's another thing that was coming out of the Brantley County Press Box was, you know, as I'm sitting here and we're commentating and doing the radio show and, and you hear what these guys are talking about is, my goodness, here comes another running back and, and good gracious, this guy, like he's faster than the other one or, you know, and then you, here comes a third one and they're just like, where'd this kid come from, you know, oh, and it, it just, being able to have that depth and have the skill set in that position, like you say, it really showed. And I'm, I'm proud of our players. I'm proud of our program, you know, where it's had to be able to see that. And uh, I mean, it takes time. It uh, does. We are, uh, we got a great group of, of seniors athletically. We got some, some good groups behind them as well. Um, it's just going to continually build as long as we continue to do the right things to build it. Uh, I think, you know, the more starters you have, uh, the more people you have taking pride in their position, uh, the more success you're going to have at this level. Yeah. Um, that's my belief system. It, it seems to be working right now. Um, it just wasn't pretty when we were getting it started. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, and Coach, uh, again, you know, I commend you on that. I'm sticking, you know, with your guns there on, on hey, this is what we're going to do and getting your coaches on board and getting your players on board. It, it's not – an easy task to people see your vision of what you're trying to do, but I really think that it showed very well uh, this past Friday night against Brantley County. And uh, again, you know, some big nights. And I, I do like to get the players a little bit of. I know, Coach, you you don't like throwing them singles out there, but uh, I know Bruce Brown and Gotten both uh, had a very good night at the running back position. They did. Um... And it was, like I said, it was more of a balanced attack. And, and we pulled uh, we pulled our guys mid-third. Um, in the mid, middle of the third quarter, um, we came out and had uh, two quick scores after being up 21-0. Um, and and I, pulled, I pulled my running back with... Yeah, so we I got to see like Evan Riles come in. Yeah, and, like seven, uh, eight minutes left in the third. So. And get another chance of playing a little varsity time there, yeah, which it, was it, exciting. It is exciting. He's he's a tough, hard-nosed kid. I, I really wish I had, had more time with him. Yeah, um, you know, for his first year. His for his senior, first year yeah. playing football. He's, it's he's his senior year, and, and he never played football ever before and, and decided his senior year he wanted to come out. And the, uh, It's exciting to see. It, it is. The, the thing is, you know, you, you want to have guys – in the program for four years yeah. because you can constantly build on their depth and knowledge of the game. And the, the more that a player knows and the more techniques and, and skills he learns and has at his disposal when he's playing in the game, uh, the better he's going to be. Plus, he's been in our weightlifting program that stretch of time. So that's um, – but for him to have closed the gap and never have played before to, to – helping us out on special teams and, and jumping in there some at running back. Uh, I'm really proud of how far he's come in a yeah. very, very, very short time. Definitely, and a very smart kid. Um, so he's, you know, I, I know that helps as well uh, with the super high intelligence level. So yeah, he's just smart. proud of him. Yeah. Uh, O-line, uh, one, I got to give Griffin a shout out. I'm like, how does an offensive lineman on a punt be the first man down the field? But he was pumped up Friday uh, to, to see an O-line just, I'm talking full stride. And when you got a boy that big coming at you, I mean, he was getting down there. You know, he was about to make a play on the one-yard line. He, you know, uh, he, he almost And he did bottom. it more than once. Yeah. He, it, it happened more than once. Well, it's, you know, <laughs> he, he's, he's got He's hustles. hustling. He yeah. hustles. There's, there's no doubt. Yeah, he's got some wheels. And we've seen him, I can think back, it may have been three years ago of him, uh, score and I can't remember if it was a scoop uh, on a fumble a scoop and score or if it was like a bat up and a pick I, it, but I, I just remember being like oh Griffin's got some wheels now and I seen it again uh, Friday night and it, it was you know pretty exciting to commentate uh, I know it didn't make Brantley County side very happy but you know to see our offensive line hustle uh, Andrews another one you know playing hard getting out there putting blocks and uh, 
seeing the patience of our offense was just really exciting to let these uh, plays set up and, and the, see the guys doing their job and making their blocks on the edges and allowing it's, the running backs to. It's exciting because it's it's unselfish football. Yeah. And you have a bunch of guys playing together and playing unselfishly. Um, you're on the verge of of doing something special. Yep. Um, with that being said, there's there's a ton of work to do still. Yeah. There's there's things we're correcting every week. Uh, things we're we're going to work on on fixing uh, every week that I'm that I'm still not pleased with uh, in offense, defense, and special teams. But you know you see you see glimpses of of where it can really take off, and uh, you know we're just going to keep trying to to work and and make sure they're accountable to get there. And good job to the other the wide receivers. I know we didn't talk to you guys uh, up a whole lot here, but I want to give you guys a shout out on a good night as well. And and coach, just again, it when you have this much balance, we we really could talk about the whole offense, the, uh, all eleven guys. Really so uh, you know, we we want to commend each and every one of you. Just because I didn't mention your name does not know does not mean uh, that we do not see what you're doing and appreciate everything that's going on because they all did a really, really That's good right. job, uh, all 11 starters there. Uh, defensively, Coach, um, shut out. Yep. Uh, it, it's big to be able to finish a game, keep that zero on the board, uh, especially in the third quarter when you start substituting guys in and you put, put the younger put guys. guys in there and, and um, they take pride in it and they learn their role and um, they do their job. And their job was not to give up points. And, and they did that. Uh, it, whether it was JV or varsity, they were, they managed to hold on to that all night. And another all eleven players, uh, right. we we could sit here and say everybody had their hat somewhere in a play at some point in the night. Um, our our defense is growing week by week and, and getting better at the things we do and the things we ask them to do. Um, we have, you know, we still have a lot of young guys that play on defense. I think we'll return. I think we only have three seniors on defense. So when you're still that young and you're starting to play at a higher level, there's there's a lot of room for growth still. Um, yes, we are doing things. Uh, we're doing good things. Yeah. Um, but there's still a, a higher ceiling for growth. Um, so we have so much more time with these guys. That's good. Uh, anybody, any standout there? Uh, you know, I know, again, uh, Trent Music uh, had some big plays. Joe Harris, I'm trying to think, he's got 50 and 51. I'm trying to think who the other uh, one. Trey Woodbury. Trey Woodbury. Trey Woodbury had a really big night, I felt. Uh, had some good plays. And uh, Cochran, uh, man, he is just Brady, really. Brady's made some, some pretty pretty strong plays in space. He sure has. Uh, very impressive and probably uh, from what I could hear from the, the Brantley County announcers was one of their number one talks of the night was talking about how this kid's all over the field and, and just the plays, the physicality, uh, the lines that he's taken to get to the ball. Uh, he, he just really did a good job. Well, I remember uh, talking to them. They, they felt I uh, talked to the, some of the coaches in Brentley County after the game. Uh, I know a few of them fairly well, and you know they felt like that they might be able to, to, you know, have an opportunity with him in space and and be able to run at our other outside uh, linebacker or strong safety. Uh, and it, that was not the case with either. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how that affected their game plan, but it didn't. It didn't necessarily work out the way uh, yeah. they all thought it would against either one. And and you know. My hat goes off to those guys for coming in, and, and you know, it's really good when an opposing team watches film and they say, "Okay, we're going to pick them apart here," and, and your guys step up. I know as a coach, that's right. got to make you well, I mean, really proud to, to say. We you know, know we, we know we all know each other in this business when you talk with other coaches, yeah. and so, um, you know, it's it's really you make a game plan and you, you look at a scheme and you look at personnel. And you, you try to figure out where your personnel is strong against their personnel being weak. I mean, that's that's part of the game. And that's the X's and O's. That's basically. the X's and O's. Yeah. That's the chess match. And so, um, you know, for for 
guys that they thought they could attack um, and it not working out for them um, kind of speaks volumes about our guys. And it, our X's and O's are getting bigger and better. Well, when, when your X's and O's get bigger <laughs> and stronger and faster, yes, uh, <laughs> you tend to have a better outcome. That's right. right. And that's, that was one of the things last year about the weight room. Uh, I'd like to tell you that every Friday night we'll be the strongest team. Uh, I don't know if that's the case yet. Yeah. I know I can only tell you this. We are significantly stronger than we were last year. And hopefully next year we're significantly stronger than we are this year. Um, but that growth is happening. Right. Uh, there's, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that, you know, guys that are, that are at the Red Raider level and above, um, you know, there's a reason they're having success on the field. It's and it, and it helps, too, that our middle school has got that fire really starting to, uh, to kick that off. Uh, Coach Owens and his staff, uh, man, he's got a really good staff uh, down there with him. And, uh, you know, and just having the middle school uh, administration support that a bunch too, of getting these kids in there, introducing them to a weight room, getting the, to understand the competitiveness of it and the want to. And, uh, and when they get to you, if they've already got a pretty good start, it's better than a kid that's just right. um, um, no weight room experience whatsoever. Developmentally. Um, we had some kids that came into the weight room um, before COVID hit, and they had been taught, you know, how to bench, how to squat. And they had, they had done some of that previously and been taught the proper technique or, or things that, you know, there's still, still small things to correct, but you can tell they had been educated on how to lift. And when you have that in place, um, you can you can crank it up a little faster yeah. with that group. Well, when, I'm just glad to see it all paying off, Coach. I'm, I'm glad it to be able to see it come together. Um, you know, a worthy opponent, Brantley County. You know, everybody was uh, super nice over there. I want to thank their fan base, and you know, everybody was very courteous. There's and, there's uh, some good people over there yeah. in Brantley County. There really is. Uh, I've known um, several coaches over there for a long time. I know. Um, most of their administration, um, there, there's really some nice, good down to earth people. Yeah. Well, Coach, again, congratulations on your 42 to nothing victory over Brantley. We're going to take a real quick break and uh, get a little recognition here for our sponsors. And when we come back after the break, we'll talk about uh, Tattnall County. Sounds great. Welcome back to the Red Raider Coaches Show. Coach, uh, coming up this week, another big matchup, uh, a larger school, 3A. We're a 2A uh, classification school. They're 3A, so uh, they are in the same region as, uh, I believe, Applin, uh, Pierce County. Are they in that region with uh, those guys? Appling, Pierce, uh, Cook. No, it's, it's Appling, Pierce, uh, Long, Brantley, and Tatton. Okay. So... Uh, we played Brantley in that region. Now we're playing. Uh, we played long, and we played long in that region. Now we're playing Tattnall. Uh, you always like sometimes when you can play up a, a classification uh, in the preseason to to get you uh, get you prepared. They're going to have uh, you know more bodies right than than we are, um, and you know that's okay. Um, you know and and. You know, our only loss to this point is, is a school from a lower classification. Correct. Uh, and, you know, it's it's one of those things that it's, you know, all preseason stuff, uh, or not all preseason stuff, but all, you know, pre-region. Non-region. Non-region. Yeah. You know, pre-region play. And, um, you know, obviously we want to do as, as well as we can in every game. Right. Um, but it's it's all working up to, to region play and, and – winning when you need to to get into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, and I hand it to, uh, you know, these opponents and what we're trying to achieve and, and what you guys are trying to do. Uh, Tattnall is not, from what I watched on film today, they're not going to be an easy opponent. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, they kind of, they worry me. 
Uh, uh, well, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're athletic. They're, they're strong. Uh, you know, their coach does a great job. Um, he's, he's a 3-4 or 50, uh, depending on how you want to call it. He, you know, against a, a run-heavy team, he's, he's more 50-based. Um, he can come off and be a little more 3-4 against uh, – or he has shown that in past years, not so much this year. He's really more uh, 50 and then cover zero behind it, playing straight man to man. Uh, he believes his guys on the perimeter can can defend you one on one, um, and that you know his seven guys can maintain the box against yours. Yeah. So that's his defensive philosophy. It's built off of pressure, and he's got some some good guys up there uh, as far as creating pressure. Yeah. Is there any? Uh, players or numbers there, coach, that you kind of notice uh, defensively for Tattnall that's, you know, um, that could be some issues for us? There's, uh, I forgot the, the young man's number, um, but their their interior D linemen are, are sporty now. They, yeah. they have a, a big defensive tackle, a, squ a smaller squattier uh, center, I mean, not center, but nose guard uh, that, that really gets off the ball. Yeah, he seemed to cause a good bit of disruption in the film that I watched, and, and he's the smallest guy on the line, but he's... He is, but he gets after it now. I'll, I'll give that kid credit. Um, he'll be accounted for. Yeah. Um, but he's he's earned our attention. Well, definitely. Um, you know, I know points were scored on their defense, but all in all, creating turnovers and, and things of that nature in the games, just unfortunately for Tattnall's defense, uh, the offense struggled a lot of timing, uh, not to say that this game, they couldn't pull it all together. We've right. seen that happen ourselves, you know, where we will struggle offensively, but they definitely have weapons there. Um, uh, there's there's plenty of talent at Tattano County High School. Um, well, they're tied in as, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how big he is, but big. just looking on, on, um, on film, yeah. he's got to be 6'6". Six, six. I mean, he's, I mean, they have big, strong kids. They're going to run a shotgun wing tee uh, look, and um, they have some good players. Um, it's, you know, we're going to have to stay, you know, gap, gap sound in our responsibilities and fly the ball. Um, but, you know, there's there's no mistaking that they, they have a, a, a immense group of talent. Yeah, their quarterback, I noticed, uh, you know, he's he's got an arm, so – he can go go deep. Uh, I watched him throw one ball 40, 45 yards. Uh, the wide receiver, um, he overthrew the two big plays uh, that I watched. Uh, but also, if he breaks out, you know, he's got some speed as well. So here, you know, you kind of got that triple threat type of deal where right. he, if, if he connects and gets timing on uh, with any of these where, um, you know, if he's passing or he's running, um, you know, he – You've got to keep all eyes on him. And I say triple threat. Uh, um, I know they say dual threat, but I always say triple because you still got the man in the backfield that he's handing off to. So, uh, and, and it, it just, it's very difficult when you have quarterbacks with those extra skills. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, they got, they got a talented guy back there yeah. as, as a signal caller. And, and, you know, I, I think they're a good team. They, you know, they started off, um, uh, 0-2, uh, they, they've missed a few games because of different protocols. Um, but, you know, I'm sure they're, they're going to be excited to play us. It's their homecoming. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're excited to get back out on the field and play. Yeah. Well, Coach, we, uh, you know, this week practice, uh, preparing for them, the players all felt pretty comfortable in what they saw in, in, in their matchups this week and what we need to do. Um, you know, how was practice this week? I mean, it, it's we're going to have a very business-like approach to practice. Um, you know, we need we need to make sure that we understand, you know, what they're what they're trying to accomplish offensively and defensively and on special teams. Um, so it's it's the thing that you know, not every day is going to be a big raw raw day. Uh, usually on Mondays uh, we go pro gear. Uh, Tuesday is our big hitting day. And Wednesday, we're cleaning it up and working on situational stuff in practice. Uh, Thursday, we actually go in the morning. Uh, and, and that's so we have a, an opportunity to go through our special teams. And any of our guys that, that play JV uh, will have an opportunity to go play JV and not miss us going through our special teams work. 
I got gotcha. you. Um, so it's, you know, that's that's our normal business week, and uh, it's it's been fairly effective for us. So well, good. Well, I know you got a JV game this evening, and we had a little change there. Uh, we're playing Brunswick, correct? Here at home. We're playing uh, Brunswick. Um, Brunswick's JV, and we're playing them at home. Uh, we had Charlton County on the schedule, but they had some issues. Um, I think getting a bus or, you know, at least that's what I was told. Right. You know, as far as I know, it's just getting a bus and, and getting here. There was something else going on. I think uh, with maybe a softball game, and they had limited buses to, to travel. Um, so, you know, if it's a varsity versus JV, uh, JV's getting the bump. Yep. And so, uh, you know, we all understand that, especially in these times. Um, so we, you know, I called around, uh, called a couple friends and, and saw, if, you know, I was trying to see if anybody had a had an opening and any availability and, and runs with Kyle. So they're going to come over and, and uh, play us today. So we look forward to that, I believe, at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Um, another big thing, uh, community feeding the players and Raider Nation, I want y'all to know, uh, like yesterday, one of the parents, two of the parents came down, correct, and fed some of the players uh, after practice yesterday? Well, Sam? Uh, after practice this morning. This morning, this, this morning. morning, okay. This morning practice. I know I saw it, I was just trying to remember when I saw it, but uh, feeding the, pl the players after practice this morning, and, and that, that's just huge, you know, to it be is. able to. It's to have that type of community support. Yeah. And people just showing up and pouring in. Um, it really means a lot. Um, from from different people in the community, there's yeah. lots of the players. And Aaron and Miss Linda, we thank y'all so much uh, for that, and um, you know, and, and it just the small things like uh, against Berrien County when Coach Ward came, and, and you know, being a, a a coach that was involved in this program before, and being a Hall of Famer now, and being able to speak to the players and see players uh, respond to that speech, and um, just like last week, Jared uh, Lee, I believe it is with. Alma Church of God come in and give a devotion to players and see players respond to those devotions. It it it's just big. It, it's I'm fortunate that we live in Alma, Georgia, uh, in Bacon County, and our community and Raider Nation. Uh, just this level of support and all the fine little details of just these people coming in, whether it's feeding the players, whether it's speaking to the players. Uh, whether it's helping provide gear, um, there's just so many moving parts to this uh, this whole organization of what it takes to be successful. So it's not just one little thing. It's not just you. It's not okay. just the player. It's not just me. Or it's not just you know. It, it the more we can get this machine moving, it it all speaks volumes uh, when it when it starts clicking. Yeah, I had a um, a neat message. Um, I'm from, originally from Jacksonville, Florida, and one of my high school teammates uh, messaged me on Facebook yesterday or the day before, um, and he, there was a picture on there, and it was a picture of his grandfather on his uh, mother's side that was a, a Red Raider and played for us back in 1956. And so he went on to talk about you know uh, a couple of, you know a couple of things in, in the little paragraph he wrote me, but he was just talked about how exciting it was and it's, it's pretty neat because it kind of shows you how how, how small of a world right. it is. Um, you know, here's one of my high school teammates down in Jacksonville, Florida that, uh, you know, I might they had message, a tie to, but yeah. They had a tie and now I, I might have talked to him a handful of times in, in 20 plus years and, um, but it was just, it was a neat thing. Yeah. It was a neat thing the other day. So that was, uh, it's exciting. Stuff like that's exciting. It is. Coach, I appreciate you. Um, Raider Nation, we appreciate you. Uh, we we want to support uh, this game big. We want to support our boys, uh, you know. So if we can all load up and, and come over to Tattnall County uh, and come to the game. Um, uh, also, uh, before we go, I want to let Brent. He wants to jump in here and, and say a few things. But we do. We thank you, Raider Nation. Uh, we thank all of our sponsors, Coach. We appreciate you and the players. Yes, sir. We gotta. We also gotta say something about our reverse raffle. Oh yeah, we do have the reverse raffle coming, coming up. up on October, October 10th. Yes, so uh, 10th, if you can reach out and get a ticket, uh, the tickets. They're available um, at the high school, uh, the middle school, um, and 
most of our booster club members. And you can go in with somebody on these tickets, so Absolutely. you don't have to be one person buy a ticket. You could get four people to go in and buy a ticket, and uh, you put all four names on there. That way, if you win, uh, it's going to be for a ten thousand uh, dollar right. cash giveaway. And not only is that the only chance that you have. Uh, every 25th ticket pulled wins some sort of cash prize. So uh, definitely, if you want to help out, uh, have a chance to win. Uh, there will be no more than 310 tickets sold. So that is the maximum number. So really, you've got uh, pretty good odds there uh, at, at getting into some sort of money. Uh, but anyway, uh, Brent, you got something? Joe, I just wanted to mention uh, my, a lot of the Folks that tune into the coaches show are some are subscribers, obviously. And um, I was told I talked to the athletic director. I've never been to Reedsville and broadcasted from this stadium. For us to be uh, aware that the uh, Verizon specifically or the uh, cellular service is not very good, so there's a chance that our broadcast will be poor or non-existent. So I want to just give you a heads up. I'll send, put some stuff on social media to remind you of that because I know I'll get a lot of texts and calls and that sort of yeah. thing if it is that way. In fact, hopefully that won't be the case, but just giving everybody an idea that they, if they can't travel over to see the game, um, it may be difficult for them to watch, but they certainly can listen to it on the radio. Yeah. Uh, you so and, it will be on uh, 104.3 uh, Classic Country. Brent, do have a question. if. If you're not able to air, uh, why we will record it. We'll and record it maybe Monday or Tuesday. When I get home that night? tomorrow night, I will I'll upload it. Okay. So they'll be able to watch it late Friday night or first thing Saturday morning. Okay. Um, I say load up and come on out. Uh, don't miss your opportunity uh, to catch in on the live action. And if you can come on, let's support our Raiders. Let's show up big. You know, Tattnall County is a, a big county, and we, we want them to know Bacon County has a presence. Uh, our boys are doing well, and they got every reason for us to make that 45, 50-minute trip over to Reedsville to, to support them. So we appreciate y'all. Uh, we'll see you next week, and go Big Red. Horns up. Go Raiders.